Rotation is one of the three fundamental operations that we can perform on an object's mesh. When we perform rotation, it can be about the X, Y or Z axis or any combination of these. Rotation can be about any of an object's set of axes, global, local or view, as well as some other options that we may ignore for the moment. The simplest way to perform rotation is to select the rotation tool from the toolbar. This will create a rotation gizmo centered on the selected object's origin. The colored curves of the gizmo indicate which axis they control, red for the x-axis, green for the y-axis and blue for the z-axis. By default, it's the global axis set that these arcs reference. In addition to the colored arcs, the gizmo has a white circle. This controls rotation about the z-axis of the view axis set. To perform freehand rotation, all we need to do is drag on the appropriate arc or circle. When operating on an arc, it transforms into a complete circle and displays a sector to give a visual indication of the angle through which the object has been rotated. Also, in the top left corner of the 3D viewport, we'll see the actual angle of rotation and the axis set being used. By default, the angle is given in degrees but we can change the measurement to radians in the properties editor by selecting the scene page, units, then rotation where we can choose between degrees and radians. We can gain a bit more control over rotation by holding down the shift key while dragging the mouse. This reduces the speed of rotation. We can also force rotation to jump in steps of 5 degrees by holding down the control key when dragging the mouse. In fact, this also shows tick marks on the rotation circle to indicate each 5 degree step. At the top center of the 3D viewport is a drop down list called the transformation orientation, where we can select which set of axes we want to use. Global, is the default, but we can also select local or view and other options which we can ignore for the moment. Notice how the arcs of the rotation gizmo change orientation to match the selected set of axes. The last op panel offers several options but the only useful one is angle where we can enter an exact angle of rotation if required. By pressing N to display the sidebar, and choosing the item page, we'll find the object's exact rotation about each of its global axes. Note that these figures always relate to the object's global axes irrespective of the actual axes we are rotating about. Since an object's axes always have their origin at the origin of the object, if we move the object's origin, this would affect how the object rotates. Here we can see how the object rotates when its origin has been placed on a vertex. And when placed away from the mesh. Using the rotation gizmo is only one way of performing rotation. An alternative way is to use the keyboard shortcut, R, and moving the mouse to cause the object to rotate. Pressing the left mouse key will complete the rotation while pressing the right mouse button will cancel the rotation, returning the object to its previous position. However, using the R key always causes rotation about the view Z axes, making it hard to predict how this affects rotation about the global axes. If we press the R key followed by an axis letter, X, Y, or Z, then rotation will be about the corresponding axis. Exactly which set of axes is used, is determined by the current selection in the Transformation Orientation drop-down. We can extend the key presses even further to include the actual angle of rotation required. If we use this option, we should also press the Enter key after the angle has been specified. For example, R, X, 45, Enter, will rotate the object 45 degrees about the x-axis of the currently selected axis set.
the number entered can also be a negative value. Blender is quite flexible in the order in which these characters are typed. For although R must be entered first, we can enter the angle value and axis letter in any order. And when specifying a negative value, the minus sign can come before or after the actual value. If we type in more than one minus sign, the angle will switch from negative to positive and vice versa if we continue to enter minuses. We can even change which axis we want to use by pressing X, Y, or Z before pressing the Enter key. To cancel the rotation details we are keying in, we can press the escape key rather than the enter key. If we press the axis letter twice, rotation will be about the corresponding global axis, irrespective of the transformation orientation setting. Of course, there is one exception to this. If the transformation orientation is already set to global, the double letter will cause rotation to be about the local axis. One final rotation option that we can launch from the keyboard is called trackball rotation. This is initiated by pressing the R key twice. In this mode the object follows the mouse pointer. Press the left mouse button to finalize the rotation, or the right mouse button to cancel it. The common feature of all the above options is that rotation is centered on the selected object's origin, but other options are available. In fact, if we select more than one object and then start rotation, we'll see that rotation is about some midpoint between the two objects. To the right of the transformation orientation setting is the transform pivot point setting which determines the point about which our selected object or objects rotate. While the transformation orientation shows its current setting in text form, the transform pivot point displays its setting as an icon. However, its drop-down list gives us a fuller explanation of all the options available. Bounding box center pivots about the center of the bounding box of the selected object. In other words, about the default origin of the object. Where more than one object is selected, the pivot point is at the center of an imaginary bounding box which encloses all these objects. 3D cursor pivots the selected items about the 3D cursor. The remaining options are only relevant when more than one object is selected. Otherwise they simply use the origin of the selected object. Individual origins rotates each object separately around its own origin. Median point rotates the selected objects about the point which is the average of their individual origins. Active element rotates the selected objects about the origin of the active object. If we decide that the rotation we've applied to an object is not what we want, we can always press Ctrl-Z to undo the last command. But an even more powerful option is to press Alt-R, which will reset all the selected object's rotations to zero. Finally, when we have our object rotated exactly as we want and with the object still selected, we can go to the Object menu and choose Apply Rotation. In effect this is telling Blender to treat the current orientation as the default setting which means that the object is no longer treated as one that is rotated away from its original position. We can see this in the sidebar where the rotation values have reset to zero. Less obvious is the fact that the local axes have realigned themselves to become parallel to the world and global axes. Though this can be surmised from the rotation gizmo if it is set to local axis rotation before apply rotation is selected. 